Okay, so for today we're going to look at section 12.3 on the dot product. The dot product is a multiplication of two vectors. It's really known as a scalar product because that multiplication has a result that is a scalar and not a vector. Uh, what you have is vector A with x components, y components, and z components, or i, j, k components, as written here. Same thing with vector B. The dot product, very simply, is the x components multiplied together added to the y components multiplied together, and then finally added to the z components, or the k components multiplied together. So, for example, for this part A here, if we took the dot product of these two vectors, we would plain and simply multiply negative 3 times 2 plus negative 4 times negative 1 plus 2 times 5. Now, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. And 2 times 5 is 10. Uh, negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2, and negative 2 plus 10 is simply an 8. So you can see this answer is not a vector. It's simply a scalar. It's just a, an ordinary number. No direction is indicated. For part B, uh, let's just say that we rewrote the ijk in uh, the bracket form, 2, 3, negative 1, and if we were having the dot product here of 4, notice that the j component in that y direction would have to be 0. We'd have to make that arrangement. Uh, then we can very quickly finish the dot product. i components would be 2 times 4, plus j components would be 3 times 0, plus negative 1 times negative 2. 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 0 is 0, Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, and 8 plus 2 would get you 10. On page 825 in the textbook that this was referring to, there are some properties of the dot product. There were a, a few of them. Uh, if you were to take vector A times vector A dot producted, uh, that would equal the magnitude of vector A quantity squared. Uh, here, let's just go off to the side real quickly to see why that would be the case. If we had a1, a2, a3, and if we were going to have the dot product multiplied to itself, I think you could quickly see that we'd have a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared. Now, of course, what you'd notice is that when we take the square root of that, we get the magnitude. But the square root is gone. So if you were squaring the magnitude, you would arrange for this to be the case. So that's a real quick proof as to why that's true. What else is true about the dot product? Well, we also would be able to say that vector a dot vector b would equal vector b dot vector a. In other words, order does not matter. Uh, this multiplication is, in fact, commutative. Uh, and finally, if we took vector A uh, dotted with the sum of vector B plus vector C, you might wonder if that would just equal vector A dot vector B plus vector A dot vector C. Indeed, it does. Uh, what we're seeing is, quite nicely, uh, many of the properties of ordinary multiplication that we'd hope to be true are true with the dot product. Now, we've worked a lot with just working out vector a dot vector b, but this definition right here is really necessary and helpful for so many problems. Vector a dot vector b is the magnitude of vector a, the length of vector a, times the length of vector b multiplied to the cosine of the angle theta between the two vectors. So theta is the angle between the two vectors. As soon as we see this link, you can see the value of having this definition. 
we can now find the angle between two vectors. And indeed, that's one of the biggest applications for the dot product. The proof of this relationship, of this equation, we're actually going to do in class. It's just using the law of cosines, uh, but we can definitely, most definitely, work that out quickly. Uh, and if you want to try to work it out, you could even give it a shot right now. But in any event, let's do this next example. Find the angle between a vector a, which is given to you as 2, negative 1, 2, and vector b, 4, 5, negative 1. We know, if we were to just jot down some information here, that vector a dot vector b would equal the length of vector a times the length of vector b times the cosine of the angle in between. Uh, let's find that length of vector a. The length of vector a is the Pythagorean theorem in 3D. Take our x component, 2 squared, plus negative 1 squared. There's our y component. Our z component would be 2 squared. And without too much work, you'd see this is 4 plus 1 plus another 4. That adds up to 9. So we have the square root of 9, which happens to be a 3. In a similar fashion, we can say, well, let's find the magnitude of vector b. That would be the square root of 4 squared plus 5 squared plus negative 1 squared. Now, uh, that's 16 plus 25 plus 1. And uh, 16 uh, plus 25, uh, of course, we can work this out very quickly. You know that uh, 16 plus 25 would be 41, plus another one would be 42. So we'd have radical 42. Now, if we were to do the dot product, just multiplying the x components, we'd say 2 times 4. Uh, the y components would be negative 1 times 5. And the z components would be 2 times negative 1. That's your left side of this relationship. Uh, the length of vector a was 3. The length of vector b was 42 in a square root, radical 42. And here's your cosine of theta. Well, working out this left side, you'd have an 8 plus negative 5 plus negative 2. And uh, that whole left side just would equal a 1. So we'd have 1 is equal to 3 radical 42 cosine of theta, meaning cosine of theta is equal to 1 all over 3 radical 42. Solving for theta, we would very quickly just take inverse cosine of 1 over 3 radical 42. You can see I've already punched that out. You get 87.052 degrees. 87.052 degrees. Even in three dimensions, we're now able to find the angle between two vectors. Uh, here's another definition. Uh, two vectors are orthogonal. They do not have to intersect if the dot product is zero. Uh, what this really means is the two vectors are perpendicular. Uh, you go to an orthodontist and uh, that doctor is trying to make your teeth stand up at straight angles, uh, right angles, sorry, right angles from uh, your gum line, making them perpendicular. And that's honestly what we have for orthogonal. It really means perpendicular. So show that these two vectors down here are orthogonal. All you have to do is show that the dot product would actually be zero. If the dot product is zero, then you're guaranteed that your vectors are perpendicular. So let's do that real quickly. We'll have negative 2 times negative 10 plus negative 2 times 8 uh, plus 1 times negative 4. This is 20 plus negative 16 plus negative 4. Uh, that equals zero. So because the dot product is zero, the vectors are perpendicular or orthogonal. Okay, we're going to go to the next page and uh, talk about direction angles. 
Okay, so let's say we have a vector in three dimensions, uh, and this vector here, vector A, appears to be in the first octant, and it has uh, an I component, a J component, and a, a K component, an X, Y, Z component, if you will. And here's this vector, it's pointing out in the first octant, and uh, the vector makes an angle with the x-axis, we'll call that angle alpha. Uh, the angle made with the y-axis would be beta, and the angle made with the z-axis would be gamma. And these are your direction angles, alpha, beta, gamma, the angles that are made with the x, y, and z axes. And the cosines of each angle are called the direction cosines. Notice that the cosine of alpha is the x component, a sub 1, divided by the length of uh, vector a. Similarly, the angle made with the y-axis, beta, cosine of beta, is the y component divided by the length of the vector. And last, uh, we have gamma, cosine of gamma. Uh, gamma is the angle made with the z-axis. And uh, you'll see that it's the z component divided by the entire length. Now, uh, I'm just going to give you a real quick proof as to why this is true. Let's just uh, remember, I could take vector a, and I could have a dot product with any vector. One of the most basic and simple vectors that you have is i. i is uh, the unit vector it's on the x-axis with a length of 1. And uh, according to the dot product formula that we have, uh, that would be uh, a dot i would be the length of a times the length of i times the cosine of the angle between them. But i is right here on the x-axis. And the angle made with the x-axis and this vector is alpha. We're just calling it alpha. Now, remember that a, vector a, has a1, a2, a3 for its components, and vector i has 1, 0, 0. If we did a real quick dot product, we'd have a1 times, uh, times 1, excuse me, and then we'd have a2 times 0 uh, plus a3 times 0, so this left side is going to entirely just collapse to a1. Uh, I've got the length of vector a. Uh, the length of vector i is 1 by definition. So this left side is a1, the x component of the vector. Uh, here's the length of vector a, and here's the cosine of alpha. Solving, you can very quickly see that the cosine of alpha is a1, the x component, divided by the entire length of the vector. So that's where these numbers are coming from, where this relationship is coming from. You can similarly prove the other two cosine formulas by having a with a dot product of the j vector and the k vector. Uh, in class, we'll prove this other theorem it's not very difficult to do. In fact, you might even want to try using the information above to show that the cosine squared of alpha plus cosine squared of beta plus cosine squared of gamma must equal 1, always. So uh, let's do this last problem. Here's vector a. And uh, of course, you might guess that we're going to need to find the length of vector a. The length of vector a, Pythagorean theorem, in 3 space, 2 squared plus negative 1 squared, plus 3 squared. And uh, working this out, 2 squared, of course, is a 4. This is a 1. This is a 9. You'd get radical 14. That's your length of vector a. Well, what we're seeing is the cosine of angle alpha is going to be the x component, which is going to be 2 all over the length of vector a. Uh, the cosine of beta is going to be uh, negative 1 all over radical 14. And cosine of gamma is going to be 3 over rad 14. You can take inverse cosine and find those angles.
Hope this helps.